Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Disney. Woke Disney disaster as up to 9,000 women to sue Disney for discrimination. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Disney seems to be getting itself into more and more trouble all the time. From the Courthouse News Service, women suing Disney over gender pay gap gain class certification. The class action will represent nearly 9,000 women who say they earn on average 2% less than men in the same job classification. From the Wall Street Journal, Disney paid female middle managers $151 million less than their male peers, according to this lawsuit. And this filing is part of a continuing pay equity dispute Disney says the pay gap allegations are false. A Superior Court judge on Friday agreed to certify a class of female plaintiffs suing the Walt Disney Company over a gender pay gap. Quote, Disney has been gaslighting us for four years, and today they were proved wrong, said plaintiff attorney Lori Andrus after the hearing. This case is not about nine individual plaintiffs. It's about all the women in California who work for Disney and who are fed up with being paid less than their male counterparts and who are seeking fair treatment. That's all. Oh, Disney, what have you done to deserve this? Probably a lot. Too much of a focus on the Corporate Equality Index. Disney has a 100% rating out of a score of 100 on promoting equity at their company, whether it's for employees or their content or their policies or their procedures. When they move away from merit and they go and they start focusing on equity, at the very least, they should expect a lot of lawsuits like this. Were the women who were paid less, paid less because they weren't at the company as long? Was it because they didn't have the same experience as the men they hired? Was it because they took on less responsibility than the men at the company? Well, those are all merit-based arguments. So Disney should expect to not be defending itself on a merit basis because merit, as we know, has nothing to do with the woke agenda of equity. On top of that, who knows? When they go through all the evidence, maybe these women should have been paid as much or more than the men. The attorney Andrus said that women at Disney earn on average 2% less than men doing roughly the same jobs, not including bonuses and other incentive plans, which Andrus also believes are doled out in an unequal manner. The lead plaintiff in the complaint, LaRonda Rasmussen, worked as a manager in 2017 and earned $109,000 per year, lower than each of the six men that held the same job title and more than $16,000 less than the lowest paid man in the same job. Five months after Rasmussen complained to Human Resources about the pay gap, she was told the discrepancy was not due to gender. The suit was filed as a class action, meaning the plaintiffs were seeking to represent nearly 9,000 female employees of Disney in Florida. Nobody deserves this more than Bob Iger. Though known mostly as an entertainment company, Disney is a massive publicly traded conglomerate, one of the 100 largest companies in the world, according to Forbes magazine, which owns cruise ships and resorts all over the world, not to mention childcare centers, vast amounts of real estate, financial services, technology companies, and so on. Disney's lawyers sought to block class action certification, arguing that its company's assets were so numerous and varied that different job categories weren't necessarily comparable to one another. Certification in this case would be unprecedented, said Disney attorney Felicia Davis during Friday's hearing, noting that it would include landscape architects, graphic designers, nurses, pastry chefs, mechanical engineers, visual effects designers, aircraft mechanics, vacation club guides, so many that the judge cut her off to ask when the list would finally end. Attorney Davis said that such a diversity of class members would make a trial unwieldy. Quote, if you want to imagine what a trial of this case might look like, said Davis, to which Superior Court Judge Elihu Burrell interjected, I know it's going to be horrendous. Davis also said that decisions on what to pay its workers are not centralized and left up to individual supervisors. Last year, hundreds of compensation professionals set starting pay for more than 4,000 employees, said Davis. This is quintessential decentralized decision-making. It's the opposite of a practice required for class certification. Opposing attorney Andrus disputed this claim, saying there was strong evidence of Disney's centralization and uniformity of its practices. 
She also said that a regression analysis of every employee's salary controlling for other variables has found that women are routinely paid less. Davis, meanwhile, argued that the differences between all the many divisions and departments at Disney mean that its jobs don't fit neatly into models. They do explain pay differences. From the description of what I've read of all of this, it looks like this is pretty much a silly lawsuit. A 2% wage variation is not a big percentage unless they have really serious multiple concrete examples. It's one thing to be dealing with these individual nine plaintiffs and maybe you can compare you know, you had this one plaintiff who was hired in 2017 and then complained in five months that she wasn't being paid as much as her male counterparts. We don't even know exactly what her job was, but you could drill down into that. You could look at that. You could also get witnesses to talk about the quality of all of their work and things like that. But if you're going to extend this, and that's what's going to happen with this case to 9,000 employees, it's way too big. It's way too massive. There's no way to defend against this except just to look at the hard numbers. And the numbers aren't going to explain any context, which means Disney's going to lose this. The plaintiffs were suing under two state laws, the Equal Pay Act and the Fair Employment Act and Housing Act, and seeking to be certified as two somewhat different yet overlapping classes for each. Ruling from the bench, that means the judge made the decision without going to a jury, the judge became the jury in this case. Burl decided to certify the class for the Equal Pay Act claim, but not for the Fair Employment and Housing claim. Quote, unlike the EPA claims, the issue with the FEHA claims is whether a common impact issues from a common policy, Judge Burl said. To prove that, he said, individualized inquiries would be necessary. As for the Equal Pay Act claims, Burl said the issue was only about the common policy, and for that, the regression analysis could prove to be enough. If the trial proceeds with a statistical model, defendants will have a chance to impeach that model. In other words, to challenge it and say the model is not accurate. But it's not an impediment to the class certification of EPA claims. In an email, a spokesperson for Disney said, we are disappointed with the court's ruling as to the Equal Pay Act claims and are considering our options. The decision to certify the class is not appealable, though the issue can be raised on appeal after trial. After the hearing, Andrus said her clients were prepared to go to trial, which she said has to start by October 2024. As for her side's chances, she sounded bullish. Quote, I think Disney's defense is going to break down, she told reporters after the hearing. Because here's what they're going to say. Oh, well, she should be paid less because of blah, blah, blah. She should be paid less because of blah, blah, blah. Because if you do that in front of a jury, you're dead. There's no way that's going to be acceptable to a California jury in 2024. And this attorney is probably right. How could Disney say we're all about equity? We've got a 100% equity score ever since 2007. But we like to pay women less than we pay men. They really can't possibly do that. It doesn't matter what the facts are of the case. Now, back in 2019, this is from Deadline from Disney. Sorry, ladies, your pay equity class action suit can't be a class action because figuring out the math would be too hard. And basically, it sounds like Disney talking down to these women. But the truth of it is, it really is too much to calculate against too many thousands and thousands of employees and specific situations. From Deadline, 10 women across the Walt Disney Company claim that the Bob Iger run media giant doesn't pay women fairly and are challenging the House of Mouse in court in a proposed class action first launched in the spring of 2019. This was before Bob Iger stepped down as CEO. However, while fine with fighting a ton of individual actions, Disney are now declaring that the potentially massive discrimination suit is just too unwieldy for the Burbank-based conglomerate to handle. And this is what Disney just lost on. It is going to be a class action suit. Quote, the Walt Disney Company described in plaintiff's complaint is not the Walt Disney Company that exists in fact in law, declares Disney in a memorandum accompanying their October 18th move to kneecap the class action. The Disney companies categorically deny that they pay any female employee less than her similarly situated male co-workers and will vigorously defend themselves against each plaintiff's individual claims. But that is all this case is, an assortment of individual claims based on highly individualized allegations. Or as Felicia Davis of Paul Hastings LLP and Disney's chief lawyer in the matter put it unequivocally, 
From her client's point of view, the parties do not need to litigate this case for three years to discover what is clear today. Plaintiff's claims are not appropriate for class or representative treatment. Longtime Walt Disney Studios employees LaRonda Rasmussen and Karen Moore instigated the suit back on April 3rd in a move for back pay, lost benefits, and other compensation. They were joined by eight other women on September 18th in an amended complaint that Disney now wants to see shredded, just like the attorneys for the product development manager, the copyright administrator, and the others expected. But we anticipated Disney's attack on the complaint and are preparing our opposition, Lori Andrus of San Francisco firm Andrus Anderson LLP, told Deadline. Although Disney's legal team attempts to minimize the scope of the impact of the company's unfair pay practices, the experiences of Ms. Rasmussen and other plaintiffs show that unequal pay is not limited to one division or one job level, the attorney stated. Disney is essentially arguing that it is too big to be held accountable. But no company should be permitted to evade equal pay laws just because it's large. Pivoting against the plaintiff's read on the Golden State's long on the books and rarely enforced Fair Pay Act, Disney are essentially making the argument that the potential class action initiator's lawyer plain calls them out on. Quote, the comparisons plaintiffs seek to make across different jobs, different levels, with potentially unspecified other differences, would demand an individual by individual review of the duties, skills, effort, responsibility, and working conditions of each woman in every job compared to each man in every other job to identify the correct comparable pool. According to Disney, in a 22-page filing to try to stop the class action status from going forward, the defenses to which Disney companies are statutorily entitled to assert for each individual further exposes the unique, non-fungible nature of plaintiff's jobs. The paperwork continues noting that differences in pay can come from aspects other than gender, such as education, training, or experience, which is where Disney really digs in. For one putative class member, the Disney companies may argue that she lacks the job critical prior experience of a male colleague. For another putative class member, the Disney companies may argue that she lacks important education or training required for the job. For many others, no defense will be necessary at all because the female employee will be the highest paid among her peers. Rasmussen and Moore's initial complaint followed the former going to Disney Human Resources about her pay being less than the men at her company performing the same or similar jobs. The situation-specific audit the still Disney employed Rasmussen requested was conducted, and the then just under a decade employee was basically told, yes, you are right, the men are paid more, but it's not due to gender. Last year, Rasmussen's pay was increased over $20,000 a year, but she says she still paid less than men doing the work that she is. Can't they just fire her for being a troublemaker? No, I guess they can't. Facing what could be hundreds of millions of dollars in pay adjustments and past compensation if the class action is allowed to continue, which it was, and gearing up for a brave new streaming future, family-focused Disney obviously don't want to be having to do that. This battle comes in an environment when many media companies and others are committing themselves to California's Equal Pay Pledge which Disney has not yet inked for its over 60,000 stateside employees. As it is, women all over in America earn about 80% of what men do at best. Disney has been a major part of creating an equity-based American culture rather than a merit-based American culture. There is no defense in saying, well, these employees, they haven't really done as much as the other employees have. They haven't been here as long. They didn't have the training. They didn't have the experience. They didn't have the results. No, 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 that doesn't matter anymore. Disney is going to have to live by the rules they helped to create. It's all about equity at Disney. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.